Greetings and welcome to a dull, grey, not particularly inspiring day in the Lake District National Park. Um, the background noise that you can hear is a little waterfall. I've come to Brothers Water. I've walked along the shore of Brothers Water and into the head of the valley and then up to the right hand side of the valley is a super set of waterfalls and that's where I find myself today. And the reason behind today's video is to just talk a little about how to make the best of capturing waterfalls. Waterfalls, I mean, you'd, you'd think relatively easy, relatively straightforward. It's right there in front of you. Um, you just frame it up and capture it. But I think a really successful waterfall image needs a little bit more than just pointing your camera at the moving water and hitting the shutter button. So let me tell you why I think that for a minute. I'm driven by my emotion and reaction to a scene or a subject. It took me a long time to work that out, but it's true. That's what motivates me uh, as a, an artistic person. So when I'm stood in front of something like this, I'm not just drawn to the moving water. I'm not just drawn to what it looks like. I'm also drawn to what's going on around it. So for these particular falls, I've actually got anything up to four individual movements of water. I'll, I'll show you those movements in a moment. As we're starting to get into autumn, I've also got some hints of autumn all around and that's very much part of the atmosphere that's in this place at this particular point in time. So rather than exclude that atmosphere, I ought to include it. And I ought to include it because it's part of my own experience. It's whether uh, consciously or subconsciously I'm aware of it or not. When I look back on this image, I want to be reminded of this particular moment in time. You know, walking up uh, the footpath, getting my feet stuck in the bog, all those other things that contributed to me being here. I, I, I want that to be there. I want there to be a really solid and firm memory um, as to how I got here and what I experienced. And some of this autumn colour is, is part of the atmosphere. It's part of actually being here. So I would tend to try and include it. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to swap uh, to the camera view and then talk through the camera view because that's uh, probably uh, a bit easier to do. So let me, uh, let me do that right now and I'll, uh, I'll talk to you once the camera is framed. Okay, so this is now the camera view. Uh, bear in mind for a minute, uh, this isn't the full camera view because um, the frame size here is 16 by nine. So it will be as, as wide as it should be, but it's, uh, the camera view in movie mode isn't quite as high. It's uh, thin and narrow, but I can still use that as a mechanism. So using the head, I'm just going to position it where the main falls are, and I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. Oh, the wind's got up. Gosh, where did that come from? All right, let's zoom in a wee bit more. No, I don't like that. That one on the left needs a bit more room. Go in a bit closer. Down a bit, maybe. Yeah, something like that. I'm checking that the camera is level, and according to my level meter, it is. So, I mean, I've just put that very, very roughly together for a minute. Um, that's just an illustration. So my four water movements are this one here, this one here, the one above, and then this little fella here. I can <laughs> here, 
with my ears, the sound of the water, you can hear it as well, and those splashes of autumn colour that I was talking about in the introduction, they're up here in this corner, which is quite convenient because it holds that corner, and then we've got some um, uh, ferns or uh, you know, whatever that ground cover is, that's also starting to turn golden, so there's that hint of autumn up there as well. If I was to blow this image up really large, then you'd also be able to see there are various leaves and so forth uh, dotted uh, on the ground. Now that's, that's, a, that's a nice view, it's a nice scene. Does it, does it necessarily really grab what it feels like to stand here and, and actually look uh, at this scene? I'm, I'm not so sure it does. Um, there's a bit of me that's a little bit put off by this blank space here in the middle. There's nothing I can do about it, it's there. So with that notion of um, autumn still sort of rat rattling around in my head, I'm tempted to actually just focus in on this fella here. Just indulge me a moment and come down a bit, down a bit more. Maybe across, maybe up, out slightly. Something like that, maybe. And the reason for that is twofold. Maybe not as much. Yeah. Some, something like that. The reason for that is to try and give the atmosphere represented by this tree here a bit more voice in the frame so it's a little bit clearer with regard to what time of year it is you've then got uh, you know the fall so you can hopefully hear the notion of moving water but then you're taken on a bit of a journey and this is where um, the fact that the stills frame would actually be um, you know, slightly uh, lower, slightly deeper and slightly taller will come into its own because if I just tilt the camera down to represent that there's a zigzag here in the water coming down towards us. Let's just move it down even more. Um, yeah, that's right. So you've got a zigzag. Where's my finger? So you're taken on a journey through the frame and quite conveniently there's a rock just there which will hopefully stop the eye. So you, you come down here and hopefully stop. And if your, your eye wanders down this little um, tributary, then again, your eye will stop there. So kind of with all of that in mind, I think that's, that's more representative of what it felt like or what it feels like to be here than the overall view. This one here, even if I zoom out, let's try and create a frame using just that. Now I think it needs more space on the left because the falls actually move to the left. So they come from right to left. So <clears throat> to my mind, they need room to move to come around the frame. Um, now that sort of works, doesn't it? Uh, if we raise, raise it up ever so slightly, You've got a tree uh, here holding the top of the frame. You've got some autumn colour here holding the frame. Let's move it downwards a little bit. Now we're starting to get, for me, a little bit messy because I've got this white bit here. I, I've not got a journey anymore down through the frame. I sort of stop at the bottom of the falls. Not, not that there's anything wrong with that, but you know, I think if I was to end my frame there-ish <coughs> uh, and have it a bit higher, so let's move the camera up higher. Does that still work? Yay or nay? I don't know. Um, I think it's one of those things, and bearing in mind <coughs> uh, for a minute, I'm talking through my exploration of this scene. Um, I, 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 you know, I, I haven't done this uh, prior to shooting it on camera, you know, I think there's, there's probably three potential frames in here. There's, there's that original one, and then there's two vignettes. There's 
this portion over here uh, with the autumn colour and then there's this portion over here uh, with that autumn colour. Now, <clears throat> the other thing technically is going to be uh, the amount of wet rock that I can see. So if I just zoom out a little bit, so it's a little bit more obvious. So you've got some areas of wet rock just here underneath my finger. All this area here is wet rock and it's reflecting the light. Um, now this bit down here is maybe not too distracting, but this bit here is. It's bright, it potentially drags the eye away from this falls and onto this bright piece here. So technically, I need to try and do, try and do something about it. The way I would uh, usually do that would be the use, with the use of a polarizer. So let me fit a polarizer to the camera and uh, let's see what we can capture with that. Okay, so I've now got uh, a polarizer attached. Um, so let's spin the polarizer around and see what happens. I'll do it relatively slowly, but just keep an eye on this area here. Look at the difference that that makes. Now, that area there, there's my finger gone, <laughs> that area there no longer dist dist uh, distracts at all. And it allows these movements of water to just have their own voice in the frame. Um, I'm just going to keep moving it just to see whether there's a happy medium. Now this area as you can see is starting to come back and at the same time this area is pulling up. So I'm going to twist it back round on itself. I'm going to keep going until it starts to come back. That's probably as good as I'm going to get it. Yeah, that's as good as it's going to be. And there, I think, is my frame. Uh, all of the, uh, the technical stuff all sorted out. Um, my next challenge is shutter speed. Now, as my photo buddy mate, uh, Mayrick, would say, uh, what he hates to see is rivers of slime. So, you know, these super slow-mos of moving water where um, it's just, you know, murky white lines. Now, to some extent, I agree with him. I'm, I'm not a, a huge fan of rivers of slime, but I think there's a happy medium in between. And the reason why I say that is I can hear the water. You guys can hear the water uh, on the video. So to capture something of that movement is really, really important. So I don't want the water to be a complete blur. I actually want it to be reasonably sharp but with just a hint of motion captured. So what I'm going to do now <coughs> is I'm going to frame up one of those um, uh, compositions. I don't know which one yet. Um, I'm going to swap back to the Osmo Pocket and then hopefully show you on the back of the screen the impact of uh, different shutter speeds. So let's do that now. Okay, so this is going to be um, this is going to be fun uh, doing it one-handed, but let's uh, let's see how we get on. So hopefully there you can see um, the difference I was talking about when I was creating some video on my stills camera. So now you've got a lot more room uh, up above and down below in the frame, but left and right it's more or less the same. So let's do <clears throat> let's do the whole scene. Um, I'm not playing with the polarizer because I've got that around about right. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to zoom in a bit. No, that's too much because I want that autumn color all around. I'm going to bring it down a bit because there's that branch here. If you remember in the video footage uh, that just helps to hold that corner. The only thing I'm not sure about now is uh, down here uh, you've actually got water that potentially leads you out the bottom of the frame but if I actually darkened in software just darken the edge of the frame <clears throat> that might help to uh, reduce the impact of that so then the next question is shutter speed <clears throat> so according to this at f8 I'm getting 
a sixth of a second. Now, I have absolutely no idea whether that's too quick, too slow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a frame just using what the camera is calculating. In terms of um, a point of focus, uh, generally for a scene like this, I would choose a point of focus that's about a third of the way in, which is going to be something like there. Yep, that'll do for me. I need to switch stabilization off because I'm on a tripod. Right, take the frame. Now really, I should have done um, self-timer. Naughty boy, Hugh. Let's just put that on. Right, do it again, do it properly. Right, there's my frame. Right, so let's zoom in and see what that looks like in terms of detail. Now, I would argue there that that's, that's close to the rivers of slime description that my buddy Mayrick uh, would give that waterfall. I think that's too much. Uh, in, in view of the, the sound that I can actually hear, that's too fierce, um, too strong, too quick uh, in terms of water movement. So I'm going to back it off a bit. Now, this camera has got a, a live histogram. Let me go back to the uh, original image that I took and show you the histogram. So the histogram, which is this down here, is actually very good. There's no uh, deep shadows and I've got no clipped highlights. So I don't necessarily want to play. Oh, there you go, this is even better. I don't particularly want to play with the exposure too much. But what I will do is I'll play with the aperture. So I'll reduce the aperture to f4. For a scene like this, the actual depth of the scene is so so small, um, I really don't think it's going to make a huge amount of difference. But what I will do, just to be really careful, is I'll now focus on the falls, because the falls is probably the most important point. And if there is any drop off in focus, either in front of the falls or behind the falls, it's going to be less noticeable. So now the shutter speed is 25th of a second two second timer let the camera take the picture save it to the memory card um, let's get rid of that and just zoom in on the image itself now can you see the difference no longer have I got those um, really really uh, quick um, slithers of water I'm actually capturing a little bit of texture, a little bit of detail uh, in there as well. Now, you could argue, uh, do you know what, I could do with a little bit more. And if I wanted a little bit more, how on earth would I do that? Well, I, I have two choices. I can either uh, use exposure compensation uh, to uh, pull the image back. Um, so I've just come back two thirds of a stop. And if you look at the live histogram, can just about see it's still not clipping the shadows but I have reduced the highlights so let, let's let's do that anyway just out of interest and see what I get okay taking the image let's replay it yes you can see it's darker what does the overall histogram look like well you can see straight away I've lost some highlight detail but I still haven't got any deep shadows and if I zoom into the image itself now I've got even more detail captured in the water. And I think, do you know what? Playing in software, I think I'll be able to recover uh, some of that highlight detail uh, and still retain the movement in the water. So I'm now going to um, take those three scenes um, and let me just um, replay them for you. Uh, let's bring the exposure back up so that you can see it. So the first one was trying to use just that falls there. I'm just doing this really, really quickly uh, and have a bit of a zigzag uh, and the rock down below. Where's the rock down below gone? 
down there somewhere. So something like that, so that you had this uh, zigzag, zigzag of water coming through the frame, but more presence in the autumn colour. And then just this falls here, but for that one, actually go in just a little bit tighter to remove the falls on the left but retain something of the tree but not go so low down that you've got this a um, uh, little bit of bubble of water down here at the bottom of the frame so let me just move the frame up a little bit let's zoom out slightly yeah something like that so I'm going to take those three compositions I'll then tag them on the end of this footage and then you can let me know in the comments which one works for you and which one doesn't and maybe if there's one that you particularly like but wished I'd done something different maybe also in the, again in the comments tell me what I should have done different. I hope you like those images uh, and as I said uh, please do tell me uh, which one works for you even if none of them work for you just let me know um, I have actually uh, I'm going to show you one more I actually pulled back a little bit from where I was physically um, and I framed another composition which I'll, I'll share right at the very end you can tell me what you think about that one as well but I hope you've enjoyed this one I hope it's been useful and constructive uh, and interesting and has given you some thoughts and ideas that you can uh, take into your own photography the next time that you are in front of a waterfall uh, and given you some new things to think about. Thank you very much for watching. Please do consider hitting the subscribe and the bell button and uh, if you wouldn't mind supporting this channel uh, please hit the thumbs up or even the thumbs down. Um, whether you like or dislike uh, the video uh, it does all help. So thank you once again, uh, do stay safe, stay out of trouble and stay well. And until we uh, go on to the next one, keep exploring with your camera. Take care and all the best.